So how is this for multitasking? On the one hand, you fight a global pandemic, save the world, save lives, and at the same time, work on your drawing skills and become the artist that you always wanted to be. That's what we're going to figure out how to do today. And it starts with a question. What is the skill set that you've been avoiding working on for a while? So my name is Kenzo. This is Love Life Drawing. Originally, I was going to make a video about relaxed drawing. No goal, no aim, just relaxed, stress-free drawing where you're not really pushing yourself. But when I tried to do that relaxed, stress-free drawing practice, because it was kind of aimless and not that challenging, my mind would wander. And at the moment, uh, if my mind wanders, it wanders straight to some quite stressful topics. So I realized that I needed drawing practice that would be you know, would consume my whole mind, that would be challenging and pull me out of my comfort zone so I really get into the session. And I think that what we could do then is take this lockdown as an opportunity to work on the skill set that we know we need to work on, but we've been avoiding. And it's different for each person, but I'm going to give you some examples and maybe you can figure out what the skill set you've been avoiding is, and I'll tell you what mine is later. So for example, are you most comfortable when you have a good amount of time to draw the figure because you can correct stuff and analyze it and also you can build up extra layers of detail and maybe the detail kind of masks some of the more underlying fundamental things in the drawing. So in other words, are you avoiding working on your gesture drawings? Are you a gesture avoider? For a very long time, I would say things like, well, I just, you know, I'm not really good at those quick drawings or ah, gestures, I'll work on it later when I've worked on other stuff. And, but maybe you're ready to work on your gestural skills and it's, but kind of nervous about it because there's these short time frames in normal gesture drawing. And with gesture drawing, you have to let loose and be bold and you can't really correct things and be really, really analytical about it. You've got to go for it, right? And it's quite a learning process. So it's totally normal to avoid that or to think that's not for me, but it's so rewarding if you do work on it. So if that's you, why not take this lockdown to be an opportunity to really nail your gesture skills? If that's the thing that you need to work on next and you've been avoiding it. Okay, another type of avoider, anatomy avoider. So, if you see, this is a good test for whether you've been avoiding working on your anatomy. And it's normal to want to avoid working on anatomy because it's kind of, it's intimidating and it kind of sometimes feels like you're studying biology, not, not you know, drawing and expressing yourself, right? There's all the Latin names and stuff. So here's a test. When you see a pose which is basically just someone's back, are you wondering, well, what do I draw here? This is just like a flat plane. There's not much going on. Or are you seeing all these interesting things that you can pick out about what's happening in that back? Because the interesting thing about the back is we're not really familiar with all the stuff that's going on there. We're familiar with the stuff on the front with the pectoral muscles and the abs and all of that kind of stuff. And when you've been studying anatomy a little bit, the back is like a new world that's revealed to you. You can start to see and pull out all these things about the muscles of the back that you wouldn't have picked up on before. So when you see a pose like this, are you thinking, oh, what do I draw here? Or are you thinking, oh, there's a nice terrace major for me to draw. So maybe this is a nice opportunity to really get stuck into some of your anatomy study. Okay, some other ones. Is there a material that you love the look of, but you never really tried it? Or you tried it once and it was super awkward and difficult, and you thought, that's not for me. I'll leave that to that other artist that I love. Well, the thing about all materials and all these different skill sets is, it is for you if you like it, but you've got to put in that hard practice to get over the really difficult initial hurdles with it. So whether that's, you know, painting or digital or charcoal or whatever it is, is there a material that you want to get come out of this lockdown feeling confident with? 
that you don't feel confident about right now. So last month, before the world turned upside down, I went to a life drawing session and I had forgotten my pencil box. So I had my iPad with me though, and that's all I had to draw with. And I started to, you know, use some color. And I haven't used color for maybe six months or a year maybe, not, not properly. So I've just been working on drawing. And it was so fun. And I thought, why have I not been working more on my color skills, you know? I love color and I used to use it all the time. And I realized it's because in order to take things to the next level with color, I was gonna to have to do so much practice. Because, you know, there's stuff like color theory and these things that you can study and learn, but everyone who I talk to who's really good with color, a big part of it is just their intuition. And they built it up through practice and experimentation. Large quant is the same with any drawing skill set really, but it was just a lot of it, trial and error with different colors. And maybe, you know, you have some theory and understanding of color in your mind, but ultimately you need to put in those hours with it to really get that intuitive sense. And so I realized I've been avoiding doing that work. And I'm thinking for this lockdown, I'm gonna get deep into color. That's what I'm thinking right now is gonna be my aim for this lockdown is to emerge with colorful figure drawings all the time. So that's my one. And whatever the skill is that you know you need to work on for this lockdown, let's talk about how to learn a new skill, which whatever it is, there's a few principles there which we'll talk about. But before we get to that, I wanted to play you a really, really cool animation that my wife made. It kind of went a bit, a little bit viral on Twitter. It's really cool, so check it out. So I know you guys probably already know that about social distancing, how important it is, but I just thought it was a cool like visual reminder of why we're doing this and kind of giving meaning to just staying inside, you know, because sometimes it feels like you're not doing much when you just stay inside. But when you see that, you realize, well, we are doing a lot by just working on our drawing skills at home. Okay, so when you're working on a new skill, especially a skill that you've been avoiding, there's three things that you've got to do, I think. Well, no, there's a lot of things, but here's three, three of them. So the first thing is you've got to expect confusion. You've got to expect the first, the graph is going to, you know, I shouldn't talk about graphs that go like that because recently graphs that go like that are quite scary. But it starts off slow. It starts off difficult and it takes time to get going. And then, you, you know, things start clicking into place once you get through those initial hurdles. So that's the first thing, is to give yourself time and expect those initial confusing sessions. The second thing is to study your favorite artists. If they've taped themselves doing a demo, that's perfect, because all you do is you take that video of them demoing whatever it is that you want to learn, and you just pause it at different um, places in the video and you just try and recreate what they're doing using their same process. It's not because you have to become just like them but you're trying to absorb their powers and you can do that by studying their work. If there's no videos of how they did it, it doesn't matter, you just take their, their image and you try and recreate it. And studying people's uh, artwork, your favorite artist's artwork, the people who are good at that skill that you're trying to work on, is one of the most powerful ways to build up your skills. Obviously there's tutorials on YouTube probably, maybe even on our channel, which are gonna be really helpful too. So, you know, taking those in, not overwhelming yourself, but just little bite-sized amounts and then lots of practice. And then the third thing is restrictive exercises. So what I mean by that is some kind of exercise which limits what you can do that's often a great way to learn something. 
So for example, for gestural drawing and quick drawing, we have an exercise that we've done before called the 12 line exercise. You have to capture the whole figure, but it's restricted. You're only allowed to use 12 lines. And it teaches you to find big curves and big lines. You're only allowed to use C, S and uh, I type lines, and you have to find big curves and straight lines and stuff that capture the whole pose. It's a good exercise. Or if you're learning color, it might be using a limited palette, that kind of thing. So guys, I know that a lot of people can't go to their regular life drawing sessions at the moment. So I'm gonna try and run some live drawing sessions here on our channel on YouTube so that you can come and draw with some fellow artists. And you know, it's on YouTube, so it probably won't involve nude models, but maybe like gymnasts and divers and stuff like that. So really cool dynamic poses. I used to love just going out and, and drawing with other people at life drawing sessions. So I'm just gonna try and do that online on this channel with everybody. So to summarize, let's emerge from this lockdown confident with that skill that you have been avoiding that you're not confident about now. And know that during this process, you're gonna have some confusing, difficult sessions with it, especially at first, and then have faith that things are gonna click into place later on. Study your favorite artists who do that thing well, and find some exercises that really push you on that particular skill. Um, I hope you guys are okay and staying safe out there. Um, we'll all get through this together eventually. And in the meantime, let's get really good at drawing. All right, see you later.